Well, the TSX is trading at the lowest level since October 2022, has wiped out all the gains for the year. How should you be positioned? Let's bring in Andrew Pyle, a senior investment advisor and portfolio manager with CIBC Wood Gundy. And Jim Thorne is on the desk, chief market strategist at Wellington Altus Private Wealth. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me. You know, I'm guilty of sort of breathlessly reporting the sell-off, but I wonder maybe, Andrew, if I'll, I'll kick things off with you, if this has just not been a perfectly orderly repricing evaluation. Bonds are going up, interest rates are higher. Uh, and, and so you have seen quite rightly that sectors that are interest rate sensitive are getting taken down a peg. Does it feel orderly to you, Andrew? I think it's, it's orderly. I think somewhat disproportionate, Amber. You're right. I mean, if you look at Canada versus the states, we are more, div more of a dividend play. You're going to be impacted greatly or, or heavier than you're going to see in the States when rates go up. It's interesting, if we go back to the beginning of 2022 uh, and chart the TSX against the S&P 500, we're basically right now back in line uh, with both indices. Obviously, the S&P uh, underperforming that year and outperforming this year. Over a two-year period, we're really not that much uh, different from where we are south of the border. And uh, in that environment, Jim, you've got the TSX that is massively underperformed. Uh, it's creating a lot of value opportunities and get a lot of nice dividend yields and solid companies. I think it's way too early to buy Canada on an index level. Um, yes, there are wonderful companies up here. And if you're north of the border, you've got to be a stock picker. But, you know, what I do is, is now I just don't think anybody who says they have an edge that the Bank of Canada knows what they're doing. And if anybody has an edge in terms of is, has the Bank of Canada tightened too much in a highly debt uh, economy um, is, is basically being disingenuous. We don't have an edge. So if I'm a fiduciary, and so we've been underweight Canada all year long, and my in inbound calls are, do we buy, do we buy, do we buy? And I basically say, wait, and here's the point, right? The XIU, the TSX 60, right? The ROIC on the top 10 names, Return right? of invested capital. capital. 4.46, okay? The ROIC on the NASDAQ 100, the top 10, 21 and a half. You have a margin of safety in the United States. And my concern is that we all talk about di uh, a diversification. And I say this in terms when I talk to folks in Calgary, right? But if we're living in Toronto, in the Southern Ontario real estate market, and you have a house, you already have big exposure to Tiff Macklin and Justin Trudeau. Why wouldn't you diversify away? And so we always talk about this. I think that the home bias up here in Canada is way too strong. And if we have the world at our oyster to invest in, it just is not clear to me that cheap is a, is a, is a reason mm. to buy a company or a geographic area. I'd love to get Andrew's perspective on this. Uh, what do you think, Andrew? Well, I think a lot of this really depends on where we, where we are going to go in policy. And, you know, Jim's point, uh, no one has an angle on where we're going to see the Bank of Canada nor the Fed. Uh, in the next few months, uh, although most would agree that we are closer to the end of the cycle uh, than the beginning. And, and to Jim's point, I mean, there is a very strong home bias here. When we've talked to clients about if this was a true global portfolio, you might have 5% of it in Canada, but that doesn't wash with the average Canadian investor that wants that degree of comfort with the names that they're buying. What I would say in terms of going forward, and again, no one's going to pick the right timing here, but if you look at the difference in uh, dividend yield to the 10-year bond yield, you know, right now we're sitting at about 1.5 to 1.7% in Canada. We're 3.2% to the negative on the S&P 500. So from a valuation point of view, yeah, I do like Canadian names here that have been underperforming this year, um, but present a stable dividend environment going forward uh, and attractive valuation opportunities. You know, to the point, of attractive valuation, the dividend yield, and I get that you're concerned about sort of the central bank and fiscal policy. A lot of that doesn't show up in the TSX. You know, the energy names don't really care so much. You know, equity does not equal economy, especially on the TSX. True. And the energy names have delevered their balance sheet. So I don't think that's the risk. I think it's in all these bond proxies that everybody owns overly. 
and like there utilities, are utilities, telcos, and it's banks. the same story in the United States, right? So this isn't a geographic name. This isn't geographically, but if you sit there and have a business model that is predicated on two to three percent overnight rates, and we're going to go higher for longer, right? Why would you buy it, right? Why? And and so what all all I'm trying to say is. Um, and I'm hearkening, and it's a biased point of view. But in 2007, the Fed and the Bank of Canada started cutting. And the presumption and the assumption today is that once they start cutting, the market's going to go like this, and everything's going to go. That didn't happen in 2007, right? Nobody can prove to me that the Bank of Canada has not over-tightened. And I think they've made a critical mistake, as you've known, and I've been talking yes, about yeah. it. And so I am just sitting there saying, why do you want to run into a burning building? Why do you want to jump into a water and save a drowning person? Should you get your list together? Of course. But why not wait? Be patient. Have certainty. Wait where? In the United States, in, in long duration names. But, but, but to sit there, and this is the calls we, you know, I talked you know, across the country. There is an uh, ABC company has an 8% dividend yield. Should I buy it? Listen, old rule. When the dividend yield is 8%, it's not real. Okay? And so everybody up here is wanting to run into the building and using valuation. Everybody up not here. Not real, why? Because it's uh, it it could be cut because of like an end bridge and Trans Canada. They're they're well at then. This level. But then what you do is you wait for the dividend yield to cut. You buy the rate. You buy you buy the dividend cut. Yeah. If you want to buy a pipeline, buy EQT. And you know why EQT has an ROIC over at 22 because they don't have a nine percent dividend yield. Right. And so if you're living in Toronto and you've got exposure to the real estate market and you have a Bank of Canada that's closing their eyes and they don't think that the credit crisis is going to happen, why not be diversified? Why not get yourself out of Canada? There's no reason. That's the risk. The, are you balancing, Andrew, your your desire to nip away at some of these value names, these dividend players with some of what uh, Jim is talking about, keeping those tech stocks that have proved to be, you know, stable and consistently deliver. Yeah, again, it's diversification, right, Amber? We're not talking about taking the entire pickup truck and buying Enbridge and BCE and every other good dividend name out there, um, but definitely picking away at this because I think you've got some decent buying opportunities. And tech, again, will offer a re-entry point here. I don't think we're there yet. I don't think we've seen the full pain in terms of the valuations in tech, but that will come. And it's not going to be a year from now or six months from now. It's probably going to be between now and the end of the year. So there's opportunities there. Uh, and a lot of people, again, are just ignoring the simple fact that I can just leg into fixed income at this point. I can buy duration through tech or through some of the Canadian names. Or, you know what, I can just buy a 10-year U.S. yield right now, or bond right now, give me 4.8%. And, you know, unless you're in the world where we don't see recessions anymore in the States, uh, we're going to see a softening that will allow capital appreciation of 5 to 10% on that bond. Well, you know what, 10 to 15% uh, total return on a relatively safe instrument, not too bad. What do you think of that? Yeah, we're, just, we're experiencing a blow-off top in yields right now, and you should be picking away at it. I don't disagree with it. The only thing I disagree with is the fact that, and I've been saying this forever, right, Canada is not the United States. Yeah. And so, and so we, I th am on the record saying soft landing in the United States, hard landing in Canada. And until we get, it, listen, once we get clarity that everything's okay, then I say, yeah, buy Canada. But this is the same and then narrative. then isn't it too late? Well, the, but look, look, we're investors, not traders. But what I would say to you, the risk is, is this is exactly what I heard when I was managing money as a CIO in the United States, when everybody wanted to buy banks, everybody wanted to buy subprime lenders, everybody, you know, this was 2006 and 2007. It's the exact same narrative. The only difference is it's happening up here in the Great White North.